Next, I'll be grading every team's 2020 NBA offseason, including the draft, including free agency. So first, starting off with the Atlanta Hawks, I gave them an A-. Uh, I did talk about the Hawks uh, in last episode and the very interesting position they are in, uh, and it's definitely a factor from their offseason. They made a lot of moves that were very unexpected, and I do think at a certain point they may have too many good players, especially with how young a lot of those guys are. I think some of those guys will be left out of the development, and especially when you have more uh, projects like uh, Cam Reddish, who showed some really good signs but was also really bad at points last year. Uh, and you're going to have a lot of guys above him. I think that's a little bit concerning for me. Uh, but at the end of the day, you got good guys who are going to help you win basketball. They're probably going to be a playoff team next year. Uh, Danilo Gallinari has agreed that he's going to come off the bench, which I think is big for them, even though you are paying $20 million for a bench player. Uh, he's going to be really good off that bench. You also get Bogdan Bogdanovich. Uh, who's going to be really nice for them, someone who's going to score the ball. He's going to be a secondary playmaker, secondary uh, ball handler as well. Love that fit alongside Trey Young, even though he isn't a great defender. I think they're just going to go absolutely all in on offense and be a ridiculous offensive team while probably struggling on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, so I definitely like the Hawks offseason. Love their picking on Yeko Kongwu uh, because at the end of the day, uh, a big like uh, the one they have, is very replaceable. Clint Capella is just a fine player, and uh, I think he's going to be nice alongside Trey Young because he's going to catch the lobs, he's going to play defense, and he's going to get rebounds, all the things you need a big to do, especially alongside a guy like Trey Young. But Onyeka Kongwu can be a guy who expands his game to be a lot more than that. He's And in the beginning of his career, he's probably going to do that, but he's going to be a guy who I think can expand uh, his shot out to the three-point line. I think he uh, could hopefully play make at some point and be a bit of a ball handler. Uh, and if they develop him right, he could be a Bam at a bio type of player. I'm not going to put that expectation on him because Bam is a really, really good player. Uh, and, and that's a lot to expect out of a rookie in a weak draft class. Like, there's a reason he wasn't a super consensus guy because he's not a Bam at a bio, but he has that similar mold. And I think they could develop him into that and uh, definitely gave. Uh, the Hawks a good offseason, gave them an A-. minus. Could have a product of uh, having too many pl- good players, very similar to uh, like the Boston Celtics, but uh, I do like the players they got, and I still think they should get a good grade. Uh, next, I do have the Boston Celtics, and I gave them a C. I just think their offseason was pretty all right. Uh, I love the Tristan Thompson signing. That was someone I wanted uh, last year as well. I was hoping he was going to get bought out so the Celtics could get him, but... Uh, instead, they just got him in free agency. I think the Jeff Teague signing is also solid as well. Get a, a decent enough backup point guard. Losing Gordon Hayward definitely does hurt. It's at the end of the day, they were a better team when he was healthy and playing his best basketball. But the injuries are just so worrying about Gordon Hayward that I'm glad we, we didn't re-sign him to a long-term big contract uh, because I'm just worried the injuries are going to get to him, especially with him being a 30-year-old player. I uh, wish we could have got some value out of him on uh, I guess it's still up in the air if the Hornets and Celtics are doing a sign-in trade uh, because the Celtics are trying to get a trade accepted, which I think would be massive and would definitely uh, improve their offseason if if they could get a trade exception and could get another valuable player uh, by using that and maybe some picks for a young player. Uh, But yeah, I just think the offseason was pretty all right. Uh, I loved the pick of Aaron Nesmith. Did not like the pick of Peyton Pritchard at all, especially when you had guys like Desmond Bain, Tyler Bay, Tyrell Terry available. Didn't didn't like that pick. Uh, But still a solid enough offseason for the Celtics, and I just think they did decent. Uh, Next, I gave the Brooklyn Nets a B. I think they made some uh, very decent moves. I do uh, like them getting Landry Shamit for sure, a guy who can just come in and shoot the ball very well for them, Uh, and it's going to do nothing really outside of that. Uh, They just did solid. They didn't make any crazy moves, but didn't make any bad moves either, and I think it's more that they just uh, need to let their team uh, develop, let that chemistry develop. You also get Bruce Brown, who I think is a really good uh, player uh, acquisition for them you get someone who's going to shoot threes he's a very good defender you absolutely need that you also uh, resign uh, Joe Harris to a long-term contract which it's a lot of money and you could consider an overpay but he's a really nice player for them so I think that was huge you also get Jeff Green who I absolutely love that signing that's excellent for them uh, and you didn't really lose much you lose a guy like Garrett Temple who uh, though being a good locker room guy for them for sure didn't really bring anything on the court. 
on yeah it's a great uh off season for the brooklyn nets they did very very solid that's why i gave them a b next i gave the charlotte hornets a b minus i think the lamella ball pick was phenomenal uh, i love them getting a guy who can truly be a franchise guy could end up being a bust as well uh but has a super high ceiling and is at the end of the day he's gonna bring fans to that stadium uh, and he's gonna bring some excitement to the charlotte hornets that they haven't had in so so long you get gordon hayward who though it's definitely an overpay big big time overpay uh at the end of the day you're getting a solid basketball player who could help you win games even if it is an overpay uh, he's going to be a guy who's probably going to average a solid like 18, 5-5 five and five for them. He's going to be really nice alongside the mellow ball. Uh, so even though it is an overpay, you're getting a good basketball player, which you should for the Hornets, especially because who are the Hornets going to get? Like No one's going to be like, oh, let's, I'm going to go sign with the the Charlotte Hornets. Like No one does that. Uh, so getting someone like Gordon Hayward who can at least help you win, uh, I think makes a ton of sense for them. Uh, and, and it was just a solid enough off season. Uh, I didn't like some of their like second round picks, but that's kind of whatever. I didn't like, like the Vernon Carey pick, but who cares? That's a second rounder. Did like the Grant Riller pick uh, and I think they just had a very, uh, decent off season. Next, I gave the Chicago Bulls a C. Uh, I'm still mixed on the Patrick Williams uh, pick. I definitely think he can be very good for the Bulls. Uh, but I'm also just a little confused uh, why they drafted him when they have Larry Markkinen. Uh But maybe they just don't think Larry Markkinen is that guy. They do have uh, new people in the front office. So maybe those people don't believe in Larry Markkinen. Uh, and... And they also let go of a guy like Chris Dunn, who I think they should have kept. A really nice backup defensive point guard. But they did get Devon uh, Dotson out of uh, undrafted free agency, which I think is a really uh, good signing for them. Someone who I was super surprised uh, didn't get drafted, but he can kind of fill that role uh, that Chris Dunn did. And then you also uh, really just didn't do much in free agency. Uh, didn't make any bad signings, but you literally only... Uh, he literally only made one signing that didn't mean anything, so it was just it was just a cool off season for the Bulls. That gave them a C because they didn't really improve, didn't really get worse. It was just decent for them. Uh, next, I gave the Cavaliers a C plus. I did like their draft. Uh, I like the Isaac Okoro pick quite a lot. Uh, the more and more I think about it, it's like you get a really good defensive wing next to two guards who are not going to be good on defense. Uh, so I think that was super important for them. Really didn't make like any moves at all in free agency. They, I think they probably made the least moves uh, out of any team, to be honest. Like Them and the Bulls really didn't make any moves uh, in free agency at all. Like The Bulls only signed Garrett Temple, and uh, the Cavaliers only got, what, JaVale McGee? Uh, and I don't think they really did anything else. So it was definitely a bit of an underwhelming offseason. I would have liked them to even just take a flyer on someone like uh, someone like Josh Jackson, who signed with the Pistons. I would even like to see them do something like that. Uh, they did sign Damian Dotson, who will be a nice shooter off the bench for them. Uh, and they got JaVale McGee, who can be a solid enough backup center, especially with the loss of Tristan Thompson. Uh, and I don't know what they're going to do with Ante Zizek. Uh, so, I mean, it was a fine offseason for the Cavaliers. Just didn't really do much of anything. Next, I gave the Dallas Mavericks an A. I already talked about them in the winners category. I just think they did a phenomenal job. Killed it in the draft. All three of their draft picks, Josh Green, Tyrell Terry, and Tyler Bay, are phenomenal uh, picks for them. You get two guys in uh, Tyler Bay and Josh Green who are really, really good 3 and D wings. Uh, perfect fits alongside Luka Doncic. They're both just going to stand in the corner, cut to the basket, and play really hard on the defense side of the ball. So I think that's absolutely perfect. Uh, and then you get someone in uh, Tyrell Terry who can be a really good shooter for them. Reminds me a ton of Seth Curry so he can come in and fit that role. You trade for Josh Richardson, another 3 and D guy alongside Luka. And those type of players are always going to uh, thrive around, alongside Luka. So absolutely perfect uh, offseason for the Dallas Mavericks. They did a lot with not uh, much flat flexibility. So I'm um, uh, really happy with uh, their offseason. Next, I gave the Nuggets a C. Uh, the Jeremy Grant lost was definitely a big one. Uh, definitely hurt a ton. I do like them uh, signing a guy like Jermichael Green to replace that, though. Uh, that is a very solid replacement, but he's not going to make up for losing a guy like Jermichael. 
uh, a guy like Jeremy Grant. Uh, their draft was just decent. I liked the, the RJ Hampton pick, didn't like the Zeke Naji pick, uh, and they really didn't do much else. They re-signed Paul Millsap, uh, which was solid. They uh, re-signed Bo Bol Bol as well. Uh, I think he may be playing some impactful minutes for them at some point. It was just an all right off season for them, but uh, didn't improve in an off season where so many teams, specifically in the Western Conference, are improving. So that's why I only gave them a C. Could have even been worse, but uh, they're still a solid enough team. So I just gave them that C, which is just pretty average. Next, I gave the Pistons a D plus. I'm just confused by the direction they're going in. I thought they were going to go in a completely tanking direction, but then they signed players who, at the end of the day, can help them win games, uh, but aren't going to be like good enough where they're going to be making a playoff push by any mean. Uh, I wish they would have just done more things like they did with like the Josh Jackson signing, where you're taking flyers on young guys who may be uh, bad, but also have the potential to be something. Uh it's just a little bit confusing what they're doing at the end of the day. Uh, I like their draft. Didn't like the Isaiah Stewart pick, but I love the Killian Hayes pick. Love the Sadiq Bay pick. Uh, they let grow Christian Wood, which I think is a big loss for them. I thought next, uh, I thought this year Christian Wood was going to really break out as part of the Detroit Pistons. Uh, I think I thought he was going to be like a near All Star level player. I thought he was going to be phenomenal for them, but uh, they just let him go and. On not a huge contract. Like, I think they easily could have matched that, but they wanted to make those signings in Jeremy Grant and Mason Plumley. So I'm just not a big fan of that. Uh, next, I got the Golden State Warriors at a B plus. Uh, it's it's just kind of weird because they did uh, lose Clay Thompson with an injury, but obviously that doesn't uh, count to their uh, count to their free agency. I uh, love the Kelly Oubre trade. I think that's phenomenal. You get uh, you only trade him for uh, top 20 protected pick. That turns into two seconds. Uh, I think they did really good in the draft as well. Uh, Nico Mannion was a really good pick at 48. You get uh, Justanian Jessup, who's a really good shooter at 51. You get James Wiseman at two, who's going to be a really solid just uh, run and dunk center for you. He's going to play good defense and hopefully can expand his game at some point. Uh, they didn't really lose any uh, players actually to free agency, so I think they did a great job. Uh, I just wish Clay Thompson was there because that would make their offseason uh, even better and make them much more of a threat, but he's obviously not unfortunate for them. Next, they gave the Rockets a C+. Plus. It's just a very weird thing because I actually love the signings that they made. Uh, I think the Christian Wood signing, great. Boogie signing, great. Uh, but they did lose Jeff Green, who I'm surprised they just let go for basically nothing. Uh, and then I'm really confused why you traded Robert Covington for the uh, assets you did when you planned on keeping James Harden, Russell Westbrook. And I don't know why you're keeping James Harden, Russell Westbrook when there's going to be a lot uh, of tension between those two. Uh, well, not even between those two, but just in the team as a whole. So it's a really, really weird thing because I think they made good moves uh, in free agency, but I think they made a bad trade, let go of some uh, decent role players for them, and then kept two players who clearly don't want to be there. Uh, next, I gave the Clippers an A-. minus. I absolutely love the Serge Ibaka signing. I think that's phenomenal for them. I think that's an upgrade for Montrezl Harrell, especially for their team needs. That's such a perfect fit for them, getting a guy uh, like Serge Ibaka. Great, great uh, stuff from them there. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, the Lakers are still a better team, and they improved more. So that's why the Clippers uh, aren't like one of the biggest winners of the offseason, because they had a very good offseason. I like them getting Luke Kennard as well. They only had to trade Landry Shamit to get a better player in Luke Kennard, who I also think fits better because he's a better playmaker. But they didn't address their issue at the point guard position. Uh, they need a playmaker desperately. I would have loved to see them trade for a guy like Ricky Rubio but they didn't do that clearly, uh, and I think that's still going to be a big hole for them next year, and I think they're still going to have a lot of the same exact problems that they had last year, especially if they keep relying on Paul George and Kawhi, uh, Kawhi Leonard to hit these tough shots, and they, they don't have a facilitator to get guys easy shots. Next, I gave the Lakers an A+, plus. very self-explanatory. They just got way better after winning a championship, got the two top six man of the year candidates, uh, and only had to get rid of uh, Danny Green in a first-round pick. Signed Montrez Harrell in free agency. It's got guys who could fit with their team. Wesley Matthews did lose some nice players that were good for them last year. Uh, but they got players who are better than that. I also got Marcus Gasol as well. Uh, just 
the Lakers absolutely killed it. Uh, next, I gave the Grizzlies an A. I think they did phenomenal on uh, this free agency. This front office is really, really smart. They had so many years where they were just fine. Uh, they were kind of holding on to the whole grit and grind team. But they've uh, really gone all in on this youth movement, and I think they've killed it. The Desmond Bain pick, absolutely excellent stuff from them. A 3 and D uh, guy who... Uh, is older and isn't probably going to improve a ton, but what he is now is already a very, very uh, nice player. You re-signed D'Anthony Melton, who was very valuable for you last year uh, as a defensive uh, guard. You get Killian Tilly in uh, undrafted free agency. That is excellent from them. That is such a good uh, signing. Someone who, though uh, I understood going undrafted, has a lot of potential. It's just the injuries that really killed him uh, and killed his draft stock completely. He is a lottery-level talent. He's a big who can shoot the ball like crazy. Shot uh, basically 40% from three every year in college. Can handle it a little bit as well. Can post up smaller guards. Is solid on the defense side of the ball. He's just such a nice player. So them getting him an undrafted free agency is excellent. And they continue to do a great job of pushing this youth movement. Uh, and are making a really, really nice team over there. Next, I gave the uh, Miami Heat an A. They just made a lot of really smart moves. Uh, getting a guy like Avery Bradley is excellent for them. Someone who fits that culture uh, completely. You... Uh, you just get a lot of guys who are going to be really nice for that team. The Precious Achua pick was really good uh, as well. I'm not a big fan of his game, but specifically with the Heat, uh, I like that a lot more. You get uh, Mo Harkless, who can be a really good 3 and D wing off the bench. You get Paul Bo out of undrafted free agency. And then you retain most of your important players. Basically, the only really important player you lost was uh, Jay Crowder. You did lose Derek Jones Jr. as well, but he didn't really play big minutes for them. Uh, and even though the Jay Crowder loss does suck, uh, you still get a uh, players that can replace them. And uh, the Heat are just going to do what they always do, have players step up. Uh, and I love their offseason. They uh, did a great job yet again. Next, I gave the Bucks an A. Uh, I feel like they did such a good job of getting players who can really help Giannis Adendokupo uh, and convince him to stay, which at the end of the day is their most important thing, is getting their superstar player uh, to stay with their team. Drew Holiday is such a nice pickup for them. Uh, you also get uh, shooters off the bench. Get guys like Bobby Portis. Uh, get guys like uh, Bryn Forbes, Torrey Craig. Uh, Bryn Forbes can just be a really nice uh, guard who can come in and score some explosive uh, points for them at times. You get Torrey Craig a 3 and D wing. Uh, they just made a, really, a lot of really smart moves. Uh, it does hurt that they didn't get Bogdan Bogdanovich, but other than that, I feel like they had a nearly perfect offseason. Next, I gave the Timberwolves a B B+. Uh, I think they just did very solid. I love their draft. Uh, they made a lot of really nice uh, picks in that. The Anthony Edwards pick made complete sense. Though LaMelo Ball definitely has a higher ceiling. Uh, Anthony Edwards has a much higher floor. I think he's going to uh, perfectly fill in at that shooting guard position for them. They also retained um, Malik Beasley, which I think is good. Uh, he showed some really nice signs for them last year. And he was having a bit of a weird like legal situation. Uh, but hopefully that's um, out of the way now. Because if he's just on the court playing basketball, I think he's going to be a very solid player for them. And they got him on a pretty good contract. Uh, and then in the draft, you get an Anthony Edwards. You get a Jaden McDaniels. You get a Le uh, Leandro Barmarlo. Like, you did a great job in the draft. You have so many nice, just athletic wings uh, and guys who can uh, be versatile, play multiple positions. You also get Ricky Rubio back, who I think is going to be a really good leader for them. Uh, and it's going to be someone who is very valuable, even if he's not playing big-time minutes. And even if he's not uh, playing excellent basketball, I think just what he brings more off the court is more valuable than anything. Uh, and I think they did a very, very solid job in this free agency. Next, uh, I got the New Orleans Pelicans. I just gave them a C+. Plus. Uh, I feel like they did a solid job. You got a ton of value out of Drew Holiday, which is very good for them. Uh, you get Steven Adams, who definitely is a bit of a weird fit, but at the end of the day is a solid player uh, and can play some good minutes at the center position. It's going to do all the uh, traditional things that a center does. Uh, you re-sign Brandon Ingram, which was an obvious move, but is important for them. The draft was a little bit weird. Uh, Kyra Lewis is a point guard, but I do think he can play alongside Lonzo Ball. I'm starting to like that pick more and more every day, even though it's still not my favorite pick. Uh, I do like getting a scoring guard alongside Lonzo. 
Uh, and, yeah, you got a good return for Drew Holiday. They made some solid moves. Uh, and it was just a decent offseason for them. Would have liked to see them go a little bit more all in and try and uh, be like a solidified playoff team because they very, very well can miss the playoffs. And I probably have them missing the playoffs. Uh, but uh, they just had a cool offseason. Uh, next, I gave the Knicks a uh, B minus. They didn't do anything special by any means. But honestly, them just not making any bad moves is more important than anything. Because they have consistently made so many bad moves. Uh, but you just get solid players like Alec Burks, who isn't going to do anything that stands out to you by any means. But it's just going to be a player who shoots threes, can handle the ball a little bit, can score off the dribble. You get Nerlens Noel, who could be a backup center. Uh, you get like five first, uh, five second round picks by uh, like trading uh, for some bad contracts uh, like Ed Davis. You get Obi Toppin. Uh, who I think is going to be really solid for them as a rookie, is going to be someone who can come in and play uh, a media winning basketball. Definitely like that pick uh, a lot, especially where he was. Uh, I think it made a ton of sense. It was uh, basically the only pick that made just perfect sense for them to do. Uh, and they did a pretty good job in the offseason. Would have liked to see them not retain Alfred Payton, because that's another guy in that roster who can't shoot. Uh, and I think they just need to get as many shooters as possible. But they didn't do anything great. But it's the Knicks, so them just not doing anything bad uh, is very surprising. Next, I got the Oklahoma City Thunder at an A-. minus. I liked basically every move they made, except for the Kelly Oubre trade. I feel like they should have just kept out uh, Kelly Oubre. Or if they traded him, they could have got more value. Like, a top 20 protected first-round pick for the Warriors really doesn't mean much. So, definitely would have liked to see them get more out of Kelly Oubre. Uh, and... Uh, but other than that, I feel like they did solid. They uh, got rid of Steven Adams. They got a pick. Uh, they got rid of basically all their good players for picks. Uh, and even though they're going to be a terrible team next year, I think that's good for them. In a stack 2021 class, it makes sense for you to, to get uh, as many assets as possible. I wish they uh, could have done a sign and trade for Danilo Gallinari. But obviously that's not their fault because at the end of the day, sign and trades has to be agreed on by the player as well. Uh, but they did a very good job in the offseason. I just only didn't like the Kelly Oubre move. But other than that, everything else was great. Uh, next, I got the Orlando Magic at a B-. minus. Really liked uh, the Cole Anthony pick. I'm not super high on Cole Anthony, uh, but I do think he has a lot of potential, and especially with a team like the Magic where he can be fully unlocked as a guy who can uh, just be a big-time uh, shot creator and shot maker for them. He's going to have all the free reigns in the world. Uh, I like that a lot. They really didn't make it, like any moves at all in free agency. Like they re-signed James Ennis. They signed Dwayne Bacon. They re-signed Michael Carter Williams. They re-signed Gary Clark. They, they really didn't do anything else. Uh, but I like the Cole Anthony pick quite a lot. Uh, and hopefully that can finally be a guard who can really score the ball and shoot the ball for them because they've been lacking that for years now. Next, I gave this uh, 76ers an A. Uh, I just had to give them that A. They. Uh, absolutely killed it. I think they did a phenomenal job in the draft with the Tyrese Maxey pick. Uh, the trade uh, of getting Seth Curry, a guy who fits perfectly along slide, slide Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons is perfect. You get rid of the Al Horford contract, which was a big deal for them. And then you uh, get Danny Green in return, which is perfect uh, as well. You get someone who could be a 3 and D wing. Uh, and I just absolutely love what the Philadelphia 76ers did. I like uh, getting Dwight Howard as a backup center, even getting a guy like Tony Bradley as a third string center. Uh, if Joel Embiid's injured, uh, I like that quite a lot as well. Uh, it's just a really, really good stuff from them. Would have liked to, to see them retain a guy like Alec Burks, but that's basically my only gripe with their free agency. Almost everything else they did perfectly and dug themselves out of a really ugly position. Next, I gave the Phoenix Suns an A-. minus. I absolutely love the Chris Paul trade. Uh, they didn't give up a crazy amount of value. Kelly Oubre was out for the bubble, and they were so good in that. Uh, even though he's a nice player, I think he was replaceable for them. Uh, I like the Jalen Smith pick. wasn't like my favorite pick by any means, but I think it, it was still pretty solid. Uh, they just made a lot of uh, very nice moves that can help out that team. Uh, they're obviously uh, trying to be a playoff team. They're trying to uh, make Devin Booker happy and make sure he's uh, not going to leave that team. And I think they're doing absolutely everything they can uh, to do that. They did lose uh, Aaron Baines, which uh, hurt for sure, as he was a really nice backup center for them. But I think... Uh, 
I think Jalen Smith can play that role. You get Tyshawn Alexander out of undrafted free agency, which is an excellent move for them. You also retain Javon Carter, who was really nice for them last year. So they basically did everything perfectly. Got to give a ton of credit to the Phoenix Suns, and that's why I think they deserve an A-. minus. Next, I got the Portland Trailblazers at an A+. I mean, they just had basically the pitcher-perfect offseason. You get Robert Covington, an absolutely perfect player uh, with this team. They needed 3 and D wings so desperately. I love the uh, Harry Giles signing as someone who, though, has had a disappointing career so far, as someone who still has potential. The C.J. Ellaby pick was solid. Rodney Hood uh, getting re-signed was big for them. You get Derek Jones Jr., who can be an athletic defender off your bench. Uh, you get Carmelo Anthony back, who uh, was big in the locker room for them. They just did absolutely everything perfectly. They're a much better team than last year. I expect them to be uh, very, very solid, and uh, I just love their offseason. Next, I got the Kings uh, at a B plus. Uh, I love their draft. I think they had one of the most underrated drafts and easily one of the best uh, drafts. You get Tyrese Halliburton, uh, you get uh, Jamius Ramsey, and you get Robert Woodard all in the same draft. And you get those uh, last two guys with second round picks when I had them both as first round values and I had them projected going in the first round. I think that's amazing for you. But the Bogdan Bogdanovich situation is why it's this low because that whole situation was a mess. Uh, and yet again, the Kings are a mess of a franchise. They lose a really valuable player. And now I'm I'm just also confused because you uh, got Buddy Heald so mad by starting Bogdan over him. And now you just let Bogdan walk. So Buddy Heald is uh, frustrated and he's still on your team as well. Uh, and you and he was frustrated because you started Bogdan over him. You did retain uh, De'Aaron Fox long-term, which I think is great. They're franchise player. I love De'Aaron Fox a ton. Um, but yeah, the whole Bogdan situation and then uh, what that also meant for uh, Buddy Heald really, really confused uh, me, and that's why they are uh, where they are, even though they killed it in the draft. Next, I got the San Antonio Spurs. I gave them a B plus. Uh, I think they did an excellent job in the draft. Uh, the pick... Uh, of Trey Jones in the second round was really nice, but you also made an excellent first round pick. You killed it in the first round, getting, uh, getting a uh, what is his name? I don't know why his name is blanking my mind right now, but you got a really really nice player uh, in the draft. Let me go to my draft big board. You get Devin Vassell, yeah, uh, who I think is an amazing pick for them, a three and D wing who. Uh, can also expand his game to being more than that. Uh, I think he could be a player who fits like a Chris Middleton uh, type of role sometime, who's never going to be a number one guy on a team, but can be a nice supporting piece. So getting him that low, uh, I think they got him at number 11, I'm pretty sure. That's a, an amazing pick for them. They really didn't do anything in free agency, though, which I would have liked to see them do. Uh, I would have liked to just see them make a move because uh, I feel like they're continuously in the state of just being a solid team, uh, but... Uh, nothing more really basically all they did was re-sign Jakob Podol which I mean I guess is cool but I uh, would have liked to see them do more in free agency but the draft alone uh, makes me give them a pretty high grade next I got the uh, Toronto Raptors at a B minus uh, I feel like they had a decent free agency but nothing great uh, they did lose two valuable big men uh, that's definitely for sure but they did re-sign uh, Fred Van Lee, which is uh, big for them. He was so valuable on the team last year. I think they uh, did a great job in the draft as well. Uh, uh, got a guy who can be a uh, backup point guard uh, behind Fred Van Lee for uh, a long, long time, especially as uh, Kyle Lowry continues to get older, continues to regress. Uh, getting someone uh, like... Uh, uh, like a Malachi Flynn, I think is absolutely excellent for them. Really good player in the pick and roll. Uh, shoots the ball well. Reminds me a lot of Fred Van Vliet, actually. So that's kind of funny that they got him. Uh, and they did get Aaron Baines as well, who I think could be a decent replacement big for them. Uh, but just losing those bigs definitely hurt. On uh, They're probably going to uh, drop off a little bit as, as a team. Uh, just due to the natural regression of the older players and then losing some very valuable pieces. Uh, next, I got the Utah Jazz at a B plus. I really like them retaining Jordan Clarkson for a longer term contract, and they didn't really have to give up uh, that much uh, in terms of money to 
uh, re-signed him. It was four years, 52, only $13 million a year to get a, a guy who's a really good six men off the bench for you. You also get uh, Derek Favors, who I think could be a really nice backup big for you yet again. Uh, he was really nice when he was uh, on that team, and he could play some just valuable minutes at that backup five. You get Elijah Hughes in the draft, which I think was an excellent pick, uh, a guy who can just come off the bench and be an electric score. Didn't like the U- Yudoka Azubuke pick, though. Uh, someone who is still very, very raw on the on the offensive side of the ball has a lot of really nice physical tools, but only shot about forty percent for the free throw line. Uh, doesn't have any shot outside of the restricted area. Can't play and make. Uh, can't really post up uh, that well because he doesn't have many moves. Doesn't have a face up game. It's just a really raw athlete. So it kind of confuses me why they picked him, especially because they're a team that's trying to win right now. Uh, but, I mean, it was a cool off season. I like the Derek Favors signing. I like that they got Donovan Mitchell uh, back. I like that they got Jordan Clarkson back. Uh, but they just didn't do anything crazy. Solid off season for them, though. And lastly, I got the Washington Wizards at a B+. Uh, I think they did a great job in the draft. Getting Denny of Dia was a really, really nice pick for them. Uh, someone who I was super surprised slipped that low. Uh, but they did uh, probably overpay. Uh, Davis Bertans a little bit, even though I think it still makes sense for them to give him a big contract because he's a really nice player who can shoot the hell out of the ball. He's one of the best shooters in the entire league, uh, especially considering uh, he's a big. Uh, but they really just didn't do uh, much else. Did a great job in the draft. Probably overpaid uh, Davis Bertans, signed Robin Lopez, signed Raul Nato. Like they, they didn't do much, but it was still a solid offseason for them, and I'd, I love their draft so much, that's why I gave them a pretty high grade.